We're going to read in a minute from Isaiah chapter 37. wonder if any of you who are here today have problems. Anybody got troubles? Surely none of you do. Well, we want to read today about a man who had troubles. He, uh, his name is Hezekiah. We introduced him to you uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, as a man who uh, was, got word that he was sick and dying. But he turned his face toward the wall and cried out to God and he prayed and God healed him. And raised him up off his sick bed and gave him 15 more years to live. But that doesn't mean that the rest of his life was smooth sailing and he didn't have any trouble after that. He had a lot of problems in those 15 years that he had left. And I want to read you about uh, his problems today and what he did about it. The title of the sermon is Spreading Your Troubles Before the Lord because that's one of the things that Hezekiah did with his trouble. And I hope that's what you'll do with your trouble if you haven't already. If you would stand with me, let's read um, Hezekiah chapter 37. What's happened before this is King Sennacherib of Assyria has sent his spokesman Rabshakeh to, uh, to the city of Jerusalem where Hezekiah lives and tells him, you better surrender or we're going to starve you out. We're going to kill every one of you. And uh, that troubled Hezekiah greatly because the Assyrians were fierce people who uh, were, were just beating everybody up and being mean to them. And let's, see, let's read this part of this story today. In chapter 37 of Isaiah, And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that the Assyrians were there and threatening, he rent his clothes, or he tore his clothes, that was a symbol of, of uh, distress. And he covered himself with sackcloth, that was a symbol of humility. And he went to the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said to him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy, for the children are come to birth, and there's not strength to bring it forth. It may be that the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that's left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus shall you say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of, Hez of Assyria have, have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I'll cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. And Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And he heard say concerning uh, Tirhaka, the king of Ethiopia, He has come forth to make war with thee. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall he speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done uh, to all the lands by destroying them utterly. And shall thou be delivered? Uh, have the gods of the nations delivered them, which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan and Haran and Rezeph, and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arphad and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, Hena and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and he spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel that dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and all their countries. And they have cast their gods into the fire, which were no gods. They weren't really gods. 
and the work of men's hands and, and wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. Thank you. You can be seated. You want to leave your Bibles open? We're going to read some more in Isaiah 37 later on. As we look at this, let's think about who has trouble. Well, if I asked you to raise your hand if you've got trouble, probably everybody's hand would go up, wouldn't they? Because we all have trouble. Job said, man that's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. So if you had a mother, then you have trouble. Not because you had a mother, but because you're human. The Bible tells us that sinners have trouble. Proverbs 13, 15 says the way of the transgressor is hard. If you're a person who's living in rebellion to God and disobeying his, his laws and his will, then you're going to have trouble because sin destroys health, it takes away wealth, it removes happiness, it separates family and friends, it takes away hope, and it dooms souls for eternity. Uh, I can't, uh, it's, it, I've been saved a long time, it's hard for, remember, for to me to remember how hard it was trying to live in this world without God. People apart from God who live apart from God have trouble. But godly people have trouble as well. Don't think that because you're a child of God that you're not going to have trouble. Now I know you go home and flip on your TV to the religious channel and you're not going to have to look hard or look very long to find some preacher who's going to tell you, oh, if you'll live godly lives, you won't have problems. If you'll have enough faith, you won't have any trouble. The devil will just leave you alone. Well, that sounds good, but that's not in the Bible. Psalm 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. If you studied the Bible very much, you know about Job. About he, how he was God's pride and joy. But Satan came and afflicted and tormented him terribly. Jesus was God in the flesh, but he had trouble. He is described as a man of sorrows. He was acquainted with grief uh, he was stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. If anybody was going to live in this world and not have trouble, you'd think it would be the Son of God. But he had trouble, and he was perfectly righteous, more righteous than any of us. Hezekiah, we read in this scripture today about Hezekiah and his trouble. We talked to you about him a little bit ago. Hezekiah means the Lord strengthens he was the 13th king of Judah who reigned 29 years. His father was Ahaz who was one of the most evil of the kings of, of Judah. But somehow by the grace of God, even though Hezekiah was born to the most evil king that the nation had, Hezekiah became a godly man. The grace of God can reach, and over, reach to us and overcome obstacles. Like Asa and Jehoshaphat and Josiah, his role model was not his evil father Ahaz, but his role model was King David. And the Bible tells us that he trusted the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he stayed with the Lord and departed not from following him. He kept the commandments which the Lord commanded to Moses. And the Lord was with him and prospered him. Wherever he went, he was a God, the most godly king that the nation had, before or after. He uh, was a, a, a religious reformer. He opened the doors of the house of God. His father had had them boarded up, but he opened them back up again. He destroyed the high places where people went to worship the pagan gods of the land. He brought about great revival in the nation. He reinstituted the celebration of the Passover, which the people had neglected for a long time. He was a good man, a godly man, who wanted to please God, but he had trouble. Godly. So, you know, all of us are going to have problems. I wish I could tell you different, but uh, we're going to have problems till we die and go to heaven. That's just the way it is. Who causes our trouble? Well, we could say Adam causes our trouble because the Bible says that 
By one man sin entered the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. When Adam and Eve sinned, they brought trouble into the world. And because we're related to Adam, then we're going to have trouble. Satan causes a lot of our trouble. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, your enemy. The devil, he walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to rob and to kill and to destroy. Satan is a troublemaker. Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, was uh, an instrument of Satan to cause trouble to the people of God and to cause trouble, to bring trouble to Hezekiah. Other people cause our trouble sometimes. Assyria was used by Satan to trouble the people of God. It goes back years before this. Shalmaneser had been king of Assyria and he came up against Samaria and defeated it soundly. Later, Sargon came, and he uh, captured the ten, tribes of, ten northern tribes of Israel and carted them off to Assyria and scattered them out among the other people so they, their identity was lost. They're known as the ten lost tribes of Israel. That was the king of Assyria, Sargon, who did that. His son was named Sennacherib. He, defeated, he had already defeated 46 other cities in Judah. And now he's come upon the capital city where Hezekiah lives, the city of Jerusalem. He boldly stood outside the walls and threatened the people of Judah, telling them to surrender. He said, if you'll lay down your arms and come out to us, we'll give you food to eat. We'll take care of you. But if you stay there and try to fight, if you stay there and try to resist us, we're going to surround you and we're going to starve you to death. We're going to put a, a circle around you so you won't have any water and you won't have any food. And he said, don't let Hezekiah tell you that he's going to help you because he can't. Don't let Hezekiah tell you that your God is going to help you because the gods of these other nations didn't help them. What makes you think your God will help you? Sennacherib was like the bully of the playground who threatens to beat people up if they won't give them their lunch money. And that's what he was doing on a national scale, on a big scale. He said the Egyptians won't be able to help you. He heard they might be asking to join an alliance with the Egyptians. He said the Egyptians won't be able to help you. Not even God will be able to help you. So other people cause their own problems. Sometimes, sometimes we cause our own trouble. If we'd be honest, the person that causes you the most trouble is the person you see in the mirror when you look in the mirror. Because we don't always do the right things and we don't always make the best choices. Even though Hezekiah was a good man, he brought some of this trouble on himself. His father was paying tribute money to Assyria. And basically that was like the we see on the TV, like the mafia, the mob does. As they come and say, if you give us so much money, we won't come and beat you up. We won't burn your house down. And so that's the arrangement that Hezekiah's father had with the Assyrians. He was paying them money every year to leave them alone and not come and beat them up and not destroy them. Well, at first, uh, at first Hezekiah stopped paying that. And he said, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to trust God to take care of us. But then they came back and threatened again. And at this point, for whatever reason, Hezekiah's faith failed. And it tells us that he gave Assyria 11 tons of silver and one ton of gold to leave them alone and not bother them. And he paid some of that money out of his own bank account, but he paid a lot of it out of the, out of the money in the Lord's house. He went so far as to cut the gold off the doors in the temple to pay bribe money to this wicked, godless man. There was a, that point in his life where he caved and his faith was weak. And rather than trust in God, he looted the temple, God's house, to pay off their enemy, Sennacherib. But he, he should have known 
The Bible tells us neither give place to the devil. You've heard, don't give this uh, about uh, certain people, don't give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And that's the way that Sennacherib was. He took the money and went away for a while, but he came back wanting more. And that's where he is now. When you compromise with the devil, you don't win. Because he's not happy with what you give him. He comes back wanting more and more and more. So our trouble is caused by a lot of different people. A lot of it is our own doing. When, when, notice when we have trouble. A lot of times we have trouble along with other trouble. You've heard that uh, trouble comes in threes. And a lot of times it does. This happened in the 14th year of Hezekiah. This was the same year that he had his deathly illness. He just, it, it, it appears, even though, even though in, in the scripture it appears that this attack came before his illness, the Bible scholars seem to think that actually this attack came after his sickness and his healing. He just got, had just recovered from a deathly illness and he hears that Sennacherib shows up threatening to kill them and take them over. It came after he had had great success. We read that how the Bible says that he sought God with his whole heart and God made him to prosper. In his, the 14th year of his reign, he's 39 years old. In the prime, what you think is the prime of his life. God had healed him from his sickness and added 15 years to his life. Things seem to be taking off and going good, but you see our enemy. Satan can't stand to see God's people happy. He can't, see, he can't stand to make us successful. And so when he sees that, he says, I'm going to see what I can do about that. And he sends trouble. What should we do when we have trouble? Well, we can ignore it. But that doesn't generally seem to work. Just looking the other way and saying, oh, no, everything's fine. I don't have any trouble. That's kind of like ignoring a flat tire. If you've got a flat tire on your car, you can pretend it's not there. But it's not going to go away. It's going to keep bumping and grinding and making noise and making your car run funny. If you've got a flat tire, it's something that you've got to stop and fix it. It's not going to fix itself. It's not going to go away. When we have trouble, we can give in and give up. Hezekiah could have said, well, maybe... Maybe there was more money left in the temple. He, he could have said, okay, we're going to pay Sennacherib off again and hope he, hope he goes away. He could have said, well, I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to do right. And this trouble comes on me. I just don't think God's treating me right. I'm just going to, I'm just going to quit trusting God. He's not helping me out here. If God was so good to me, why would I be having all this trouble? But he didn't do that. What did he do with his trouble? Well, verse 14 says that he took this letter and he laid it out and he read it. He sat down and tried to examine what his trouble really is. Sometimes we have so much trouble that it's hard for us to break down and see what the problem uh, really is. And so it's good to sit down and look and say, well, what, what is the real problem here? And he did that. When we have problems, we need to go to the house of the Lord. That's what he did. It says in verse 14 that he got up and he, he took that letter that he got from Sennacherib and he took it to the house of the Lord. Sometimes when people have problems, they stay away from the house of the Lord. And you talk to them about it and they say, well, I'm going through a bad time right now. I've, I'm having some problems right now. When I get all these problems worked out, then I'll come back to church. But when you're having problems, that's not when you need to stay away from church. That's when you need to be here more than at any other time. It's when you have troubles. Because when you come to church, you'll have people that really care about you. When you come to church, you're going to hear the word of God that can help you with your troubles. So Hezekiah read that letter to see what the problem was. And he brought it up to the house of the Lord. And it says, verse 14, it says... And he spread it before the Lord. He told Isaiah, the prophet, about it. He told his advisors about it. He told his counselors about it. And there's certainly, uh, certainly good can come when 
people we know love us and care about us and wise, godly people. Good can come from sharing the problem with them. That's why we have prayer lists. So you can share your problems and other people can join you in praying about it. And he did that, but most of all, he spread his problems before the Lord. He just laid it out. You know, God knows it anyway. You may as well just do that. Lay it out before the Lord. Spread your problems before the Lord. We must recognize God's greatness and power. In verse 15 and 16, he prayed unto the Lord. and He said, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel that dwells between the cherubims, you are the God, even you alone. You've made heaven and earth. He said, Lord, uh, Sennacherib saying, you can't help me, but I believe you can. Because I believe you're stronger than Sennacherib is. Sennacherib said, the gods of these other countries couldn't help them. Your God can't help you. He said, but Hezekiah says, but these were just pretend gods. They were false gods. You're the real God. You're the true God. You're the one who made heaven and earth. He expressed confidence in God's greatness and his power. Do you believe that God is really able to help you with your problems? He can. And Hezekiah knew that and he believed that. We must assure ourselves that God is willing to help us. Some people say, well, why would God, you know, God's running the affairs of the world. Why would he be concerned that you're having financial problems? Why would he be concerned that you don't have a job? Why would he be concerned about you and your husband not getting along? Well, the Bible assures us, cast all your care on him for he cares for you. And the psalmist said, like a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that love him. I assure you, you may not think that you're ranked very high on the world scale and people in foreign countries don't know about you and who you are, but God knows who you are. And he cares about you very much. And he wants to help. We must ask God to help us. And Hezekiah did that, verse 17. He said, incline thy ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib. I ask God to help. Some people are too proud to ask anybody to help. But God is able to help. God is willing to help. He's just waiting for us to ask. And then what did God, what does God do about our trouble? Sennacherib said God can't do anything. God won't do anything. It's useless to pray. It's useless to ask your God to help you. He won't be able to do it. He can't do anything. You're done for. But what did God do with Hezekiah's trouble? God wants us to spread our troubles out before him. Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things out that thou knowest not. Psalm 34, 19, I quoted it earlier, part of it earlier. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. 2 Corinthians 2, 14, Thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. What did God do in response to Hezekiah when he spread his troubles for the Lord? God promised to protect him. Down in verse, if you'll look down in verse 33 through 35. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By the way he came, the same way he shall return, and he shall not come into this city, saith the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Sennacherib said, you give up and surrender, or I'm going to starve you to death. I'm going to walk in that city and kill every one of you. There's no hope. And God said, no, he's not. No, he's not. He said, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to protect you. Romans 8, 37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
In Romans 8, it also says, if God be for us, who can be against us? I like what somebody said. You've probably heard it. Don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big God is. God said, I'm going to protect you. God protects his children. He promised provision. Sennacherib said, I'm going to send this army around here. They're going to camp around you. And he, he, it says in there, he said, you're going to run out of food, so you won't have anything but excrement to eat. You're going to run out of water. The only thing you have to drink is your own urine. But God said, verse 30, this shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year such as groweth of itself. The second year that which springeth of the same. The third year sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. God said he's not going to starve you out. Because I'm going to drive him away. And I'm going to let you plant your crops. You're going to have the harvest and eat from it. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God promised destruction. Verse 28 made me smile when I read it. He said to Sennacherib, I know thy abode and thy going out and thy coming in and thy rage against me. It's like God says, I know where you live. And I'm watching you. And the scripture says, uh, maybe it didn't all fit together while I was reading it, but while he's Got his army there. He gets word. Well, somebody's invading you here. You got to go back there and somebody else invading you. And so he had to withdraw his troops and go home. God said the same way you came. That's the way you're going to go back. And so he had, uh, he, he had some uh, attraction. He had some distractions on the other side. And it says in verse 36, And the angel of the Lord went forth and smote the camp of the Syri Assyrians and a hundred... Uh, 185,000. And when the, when the people woke up in the morning, they were surrounded, this army that had surrounded the city, 185,000 of them were dead. In one night. They had said, your God won't be able to help you. I wonder what they think now. Because 185,000 soldiers that went to sleep that night died in their sleep because, of the angel, because the angel of the Lord smote them. So Nacarib said, your God won't be able to help you. I believe he did, don't you? Wiped out 185,000 of them. And then it goes on, verse 37. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. And it came to pass, uh, the historians tell us this was about 20 years later. It came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that uh, Dramelech and Sherezer, his sons, smote him with the sword and they escaped in the land of Armenia. And his son reigned in his stead. God told him, I'm watching you. I know where you live and I'm coming after you. And he didn't do it immediately. But 20 years later, while he was worshiping his God, that he said was stronger than their God, his gods didn't protect him. His own sons went in while he was praying and killed him. God did a miracle when Hezekiah spread his troubles before the Lord. I know you've got troubles. Believe it or not, I have troubles sometimes. There was one thing a few weeks ago that troubled me greatly. I lost several nights sleep over it. But I've spread it out before the Lord. And the problem hadn't resolved itself yet, but I've got peace about it at least. Because I laid it out before the Lord. And I know He cares. And I know He's all-powerful. I know He can help. And I can't do anything about it other than I've laid it out before him. I love this little poem. You got any rivers you think uncrossable? You got any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in doing the impossible. He does things others cannot do. The song we sing sometimes, Sweet Hour, Sweet Hour of Prayer, it says, Oh, what needless, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. 
The question is not whether you got trouble or not. The question is what are you going to do with your problems, with your troubles? Hezekiah spread his troubles before the Lord. And he cried out to the Lord. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord answered his problem. You got troubles today? Spread them out before the Lord. Ask him to undertake. And he's promised that he will. Maybe not, the problem might not go away immediately. It might not get answered the way you expect it to. But if you spread your troubles out before the Lord, he will hear. And he will answer and he will help. And he will give you assurance that he's taking care of the trouble. I want you to stand. Our musicians are going to come. You're welcome to join me in this altar if you want to this morning. And lay your troubles out. Spread them out before the Lord and talk to him about it. And say, Lord, I'm in trouble. I don't know what to do. Would you please help me? Would you please come and fight for me? Would you please come and give me some relief? And God's promise that if you'll do that, he'll listen. He'll hear. He'll help.